Welcome to the Cape Fear Sports Report, driven by Stevenson Automotive Group. In this show, we'll take a look at the high school football playoffs, and we'll also take a look at all things sports over at UNCW. Plus, we'll sit down with Margaret Weller Stargell to talk about the upcoming event to benefit the Willie Stargell Foundation. It all begins on the Cape Fear Sports Report right now. <laughs> Welcome to the Cape Fear Sports Report, driven by Stevenson Automotive Group. I'm Jesse Jones. I'm Jim Clark. Big week in sports, not only UNCW, but also the high school ranks. And Jesse, you were out this weekend. Uh... Over at Legion Stadium, it was a big game. Uh, let's check out the action. Hoggard versus New Hanover. That said, you know it's a big game. Throw in the fact that both teams came into Friday night's clash undefeated in the Mid-Eastern Conference, and you've got a dream matchup. New Hanover was looking to stop a losing streak to Hoggard dating back to 1996, and things got off to a great start for the Wildcats. Quarterback Jordan Betts goes deep and connects with Jamil James, who winds up wrestling the ball away, giving New Hanover a first and goal from the two. On the very next play, Tevin Mishu capped the drive with 3.05 left in the first quarter. New Hanover took a 7-0 lead. The Vikings would respond after getting the defense to suck up, looking for the run. Javon Genright looks downfield and hits Ashton Fry, who never breaks stride, taking it to the house and evening the score at 7. Hoggard would take the lead with 4.11 left before the half as Ian Durham connects from 40 yards out. In the third quarter, Rashard McDonald got into the scoring column putting Hoggard up 16-7 on a one-yard plunge. New Hanover looked to regroup. Nick Esquire's field goal with 2.41 left to play made it a one-score game at 16-10. The Wildcats would have one last chance, but Kevin Dunaway forces the fumble for Hoggard. The Vikings would recover and ice the game, extending their winning streaks of Mid-Eastern wins at 32, Mid-Eastern championships at eight, and wins over New Hanover at 14. Good all season for us to get us eight straight conference championship. Give it up for the Hogger Vikings and all our fans that were here. We had a great time tonight, it was a great game. Hoggard finishes the regular season 7-4 and four, New Hanover 8-3. Hoggard finishes 5-0 and oh in Mid-Eastern play while New Hanover wraps up 4-1. and one. With their 33-27 win over Laney, Ashley wraps up at 2-3 and three, tied with New Bern and Rose while Laney finishes at 0-5. Oh Looking ahead to Friday night's first round playoff matchups, New Hanover, the number five seed in the 4A, will host Holly Springs, while in the 4 AA, Hogger, the number two seed, will host Carey. And don't forget to log on to CapeFearSportsReport.com. We'll have all the high school football playoff action there for you. And over at UNCW, Jim Dalkey caught up with the UNCW basketball team in their first exhibition game and also has a look at the men's soccer team as they prepare for the postseason in the CAA. Thanks, guys. Jim Dalka here at Trask Coliseum for the start of the 2009-2010 Seahawks men's basketball season. Let's take a look at the highlights. The Seahawks faced North Greenville Saturday night for the club's first exhibition game of the season. The Seahawks were looking to win their 19th straight exhibition game, a streak dating back to 1998. The Seahawks were going to have to do so without their starting point guard, Chad Tomko, who was out with a stress fracture. His replacement, senior Johnny Wolf, started the night off with a three from their wing and controlled the offense from the get-go. Junior standout Dominique Lacey was also key early on. He hit a couple of big jump shots in the first half to get the Seahawks off to an early lead. But he had five turnovers for the game, something he will definitely need to improve on once the regular season begins. The player of the game, though, for UNCW had to be Montez Downey, who started his senior season with a game-high 16 points. He was 6 for 10 from the field, including three trifectas. With more performances like this, expect Downey to make his way into the starting lineup. The big question many Seahawks fans were asking was, how would ECU transfer John Fields fit into the offense? Well, the 6'9 junior responded with 13 points and 7 rebounds for a Seahawk debut. Fields and the rest of the Seahawks rolled North Greenville 80-43. Seahawks' next game is against Appalachian State on November 13th. <laughs> 
After finishing third in the regular season, the women's soccer team earned a spot in the CAA tournament. UNCW faced Hofstra Friday in the semifinal round and won in dramatic fashion as sophomore Aaron Pardini scored in overtime to lift the Seahawks to a 2-1 victory. The UNCW will face fourth seeded James Madison at 1 p.m. today to earn a spot in the NCAA tournament. Be sure to check CapeFearSportsReport.com for the results. After a stellar regular season that included zero conference losses, the men's soccer team goes into the CAA tournament with the number one seed and an impressive ranking of 21st in the country. The conference tournament will be played at the UNCW Soccer Stadium starting Friday, November 13th. The Seahawks face Old Dominion at 7.30. Thank you, Jim, for that report. That's not the only college hardwood action that's starting up. Cape Fear Community College made it all the way to Hutchinson, Kansas last year for the Junior College National Championship. They're back in action. We caught up with them in their first game of the regular season. Cape Fear Community College started that conquest Monday night at the Schwartz Center in Wilmington. Coach Mantlow's team took a while to get things going. The offense was discombobulated to start. Here, Wake Tech gets the steal and the dunk down the other end. The Sea Devils found themselves staring at a double-digit deficit early on, but they rallied. Vernon Payne uses the window appropriately enough. Florida State and current Towson coach Pat Kennedy was on hand to get a look at Cephas Oglesby. The sophomore guard didn't disappoint, showing the range with the jumper. And then he'll pick up the assist with a nice dish inside. Randolph Howell with the finish. While it was a shaky start for the Sea Devils, they rallied to beat Wake Tech 86-80 as they start what they hope is a return to Hutch. You can check out Cape Fear Community College at home Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at high school soccer action. We'll also have an interview with Joe Browning. And I'll sit down with Margaret Weller Stargell as her organization, the Willie Stargell Foundation, gets ready for a busy weekend next weekend right here in the Cape Fear area. This is the Cape Fear Sports Report, driven by the Stevenson Automotive Group.